Now we're going to discuss how radioactive atoms such as carbon-14 can actually be used as tracers in medicine, biology, and chemistry. So a tracer is basically any type of object that can be readily monitored. For example, we can synthesize a tracer molecule by using our radioactive isotopes, our radioactive atoms. For example, some type of molecule, let's say an amino acid, can be synthesized artificially using our tracer atoms. And this molecule, amino acid, becomes known as the tracer amino acid. So this amino acid can then be injected into a biological cell. And that biological cell, cell can readily use it to synthesize proteins. So basically, as our amino acids are used up because of the unstable atoms that they contain, they will give off radiation. And this radiation can be readily detected by using some type of device or instrument. And in this way, we can study things like where those amino acids actually end up within the cell and where proteins are synthesized. And this is exactly how we know that proteins are synthesized inside the ribosomes and then they are sent off into the Golgi apparatus where they are modified and then sent off to different regions, for example, the cell membrane. So we can study and understand the way that things work within the biological cell. This is one of the many examples of how radioactive tracers can be used. Now another important application of these radioactive tracers is in the field of medicine. So this is known as emission tomography. Emission tomography is basically the idea of injecting these radioactive active tracers into the human body to study the way that our body functions, the way that certain processes and certain organs function. So radioactive tracers can be used in medicine to create images that describe the biological activity via emission of radiation by those tracers. And this is known as emission tomography. So there are two important techniques that are that fall into the category of emission tomography. So we have the single photon emission computed tomography or SPEC and the positron emission tomography or PET or PET. So basically within this particular technique, a gamma emitting radioactive tracer is injected into a patient via let's say the bloodstream and the gamma detector, some type of device that is able to detect gamma radiation can be used to measure the intensity of our emitted gamma radiation. Now this in turn can be used to produce a two-dimensional image of the biological activity of that radioactive isotope. Now let's examine the second type of technique known as the positron emission or the positron emission tomorrow Tomography. So, in this technique, tracer molecules are synthesized and injected into our patient. These tracer molecules then travel to the region of interest. The radioactive atoms of the tracer molecule undergo not gamma emission, but first a positron emission, releasing a positron molecule or a positron particle. That positron particle then collides with an electron in the outer shell of an atom and that positron and electron basically annihilate releasing gamma radiation in the process and then that gamma radiation can be picked up using our gamma reading device. So basically let's suppose we have a carbon that is injected into our body then that carbon undergoes a positron emission 
radiation releasing an electron or an electron with a positive charge known as the beta positive particle. That beta positive particle then collides with an actual electron found in an atom and that annihilates these two particles releasing two gamma rays. Now because these electrons basically collide head on, when they collide by the conservation of momentum, the two gamma rays that are produced must move off in opposite directions. And these rays can be then picked up using a gamma radiation detector. So what exactly can we conclude about these two types of methods used? How do these methods compare to our conventional x-ray imaging and the, the CT scan? So unlike x-ray techniques such as CAT scans or CT scans, SPECT and PET techniques create images that do not describe the actual structure of our region but rather describe the biochemistry of of that region of interest. They paint a better picture of what is actually taking place within that region in terms of that region's biological functionality. So once again, we can use radioactive tracers to basically help us understand how certain processes function within places like our biological cell as well as the human body. So we can use these types of techniques, for example, to determine where the tumor is located within the body.